Hey everyone, Ken Profit here with another Blender tutorial. In this video, we're gonna draw fire in Blender using geometry nodes. Uh, it doesn't have to be fire, we can actually uh, draw anything. This is just a fun, simple way of how to instance objects along a curve so that you can get that nice, easy draw function. So this was a use case I created using this method. And you can see if I just grab my pen tool here, then I can draw any shape and fire appears. And then of course I can go into that curve now and I can edit that curve, I can move it around. But I wanna show you a little bit about some of the things I set up in my particular tool. So uh, I have this just fire button, which will remove the smoke or this just smoke button where you can just switch and just, just view the smoke if you want that. Uh, let me go ahead and delete all these points. I'll go to top view and just draw a simple curve here again. Um, oh yeah, I have a proxy switch as well. I'll turn all those off so we're viewing the actual fire here. I put in some rotation, random rotation values to randomize each instance of those little flames. And then of course scale. So you get some really creative looks here. I have a manual density switch, which I'm not using right now, but if I check off the use curve density, then this manual density becomes uh, a bit more important. You can see what that's doing. And then the use curve density is useful because no matter where I drag this curve, it's gonna keep the same, uh, the same level of detail between each instances. So if I start extruding, then it's just using the density of the curve uh, rather than just a, a manual density of scattered points along the curve. If you're a Patreon member, then you can download this blend file and play around, mess with it, reverse engineer it. If you don't wanna be a Patreon member, that's totally fine, but there's, there's another way to get this file. Uh, link in the description if you want that. All right, so how do you set something like this up? Let's open up a new Blender file. I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything here. I'm gonna go to top view and just press Shift A and add in a Bezier curve. All right, and uh, yeah, that works. We'll just drag these points out here. And with that selected, I'm gonna jump into geometry nodes, create a new geo nodes network. I don't actually need the spreadsheet for this, so I'm gonna close that off. Um, and my group input is my curve, really simple. I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a curve to points node. And now you see we get points right there along our curve. All right, okay, so we're done. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I mean, that, that's really, there's not much more to it than that. There's evaluated count and length. So different ways you can, can adjust the density of your curve here. So this was kind of what I was showing you with my tool. Uh, this is just sort of absolute density right here. But if we set this to length, then it evaluates the density between points, no matter, no matter where your curve is. So it'll calculate that. You can see it's like accordion. So if we start extruding, then it'll evaluate that correctly. Uh, so there's length and then there's count, which is just kind of absolute density. So let's say you want to create kind of a switch between these two. I can press control shift D so that they duplicate that node, but it's still fed into the input. I'll leave the top one on count. The bottom one, I'll set that to length. Shift A and just add in a switch node. I love these switch nodes. Uh, and then I can just take this switch node into my group input. And now we have a switch here that switches between curve density and absolute density. So I can name uh, these two on this group input and I can name the switch as well. I'll just take the count of the top one into the input and the length of the bottom one into the input. And you can see they're starting to appear over here. And I'm in the modifiers panel in order to see that. I'll press in to bring up the sidebar and go to view, or I'm sorry, group. Let's grab that switch and we can name this use, use curve density, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> uh, because if we check that, then it's using the density of the, of the curve. If we uncheck it, then it's just using absolute density. So uh, then we can name these other two. So this count one, we can name, uh, we'll just name this density or let's do manual density. It's more of a manual function. And then the bottom one can be curve density, all right? So now if I say, yeah, I wanna use curve density and then I wanna increase the space between the points. That's what that value is. If you don't wanna use curve density, you wanna just do manual, then there you go. You have a slider there. So uh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to set it up like that, but I'm just, hopefully it's a nice little tip on how to how to easily set up your geo nodes network so that you can have all these settings in your modifiers panel.
All right, now obviously we don't want just points. We want them to actually instance objects. So if I press Shift A and add in an instance on points node, and if you've watched my other geometry nodes videos, you know, it's not too different from anything else we do. Uh, you have points. This, I guess the main difference is the points are on a curve that can be manually edited. And now you want to just instance something along those points. Uh, so we could create a collection of objects. In fact, why don't we do that? I'm going to go to layout, go to object mode, and I'll press shift A and drop in a monkey and a sphere and a cube. Let's grab all three of those objects. I'll press M, create a new collection. Uh, just name it stuff. And then I, uh, I'll disable that in the viewport so that we don't see it. Let me grab my curve, go back into geometry nodes. Now I can just drag and drop this stuff collection right into my geo nodes network and feed that into the instances. And now we're instancing all, all of those along the curve. And if we choose separate children and then pick instance, then we're uh, getting an object along each point. And then, you know, use curve density. That allows us to, now we can just extrude. Yippee. Uh, so that's cool. Um, and then of course you can also draw. So curve draw, drawing monkeys and cubes <laughs> all day long. So if you want to write your name, go crazy, have fun. My name and monkey monkey heads. But this illustrates, well, now we need to be able to adjust the scale. So uh, yeah, we do. So let's drop in random value nodes. And we'll set this first one to vector. Let me collapse that down. And the vector, the, the minimum value should all be zero. The max value, we don't really need the, well, if you want banking, I guess you can leave these how they are. Uh, let's just plug that into rotation. And now let's take this max output into the input of our geometry input. And then let's name that rotation. Okay, so now you have rotation values of all these objects. And you probably want the first two to be set to zero because that's the X and Y. And then this bottom one is Z. So now I'm giving random rotation to each instance along my, my curve here. Um, and then let's duplicate this. And this one we can set to a, a uh, float value. We just need minimum and maximum. Feed that into scale, feed the max output into uh, our geometry input here. And now we have a random scale value. So there you can see my name, Kenan in uh, monkey heads, cubes, and spheres a little bit clearer. Uh, so I know it's a little bit ridiculous of an example, but hopefully you can see the potential here. You can just keep drawing and it'll just keep instancing. And we can go back to using absolute density if we want, crank up that manual density. Let me delete all that. It's a bit messy, um, but that's pretty much it. You know, there's a lot of other things I did for my tool just to kind of spice up some random seed values and uh, switch between different collections of assets. Uh, and you can, like I said, you can download my file, reverse engineer it, or uh, basically just add more switch values, some some random values. You know, here's a seed value you have. So you could plug that into the count, the density, for instance, to get random seed values, uh, anything like that. Obviously, you probably don't want to use uh, just spheres and cubes. So I'll show you, I'll show you what I did for mine. Very, very simple. I'm just going to append in, let me save this real quick. I'm going to append in my fire material. So here's my fire material asset. If I go to rendered mode, you can see we can play it and it's just, just an object with displacement and a fire material map to it. So I have a tutorial on how to make this, uh, just a procedural fire renders in real time. You can go check out that tutorial. Or of course, you know, if you have rocks, uh, trees, grass, this is a really fun way of instancing really anything in Blender. Fire just kind of was a, a really obvious choice for me because I love fire, I love burning things. and. Uh, you know, who doesn't want to draw fire? <laughs> so let me just disable this group in the viewport and I'll drag and drop it into my geometry nodes network. And again, I could create a switch node to switch between if I wanted this to be like, oh, I want to switch between monkey heads and fire or whatever. Uh, I'll, for now, I'll just delete that. Uh, so now I have my fire group here and I'll take that into the instance input along my curve. And then uh, now this allows me to just tab into edit mode for my curve and I can draw fire, which is pretty cool. My density is pretty high. So I'm going to uh, check use curve density. Woohoo.
So now you can draw your name in fire. And this does play in real time. You can see it's, it renders really, really quickly because it's just a material. Play with random rotation value. You could bank them a little bit. You don't want to do much rotation along the X and Y, but a little bit of banking. Break up that uh, uniformness. And of course the random scale value. And then you just go crazy, light things on fire. Uh, hopefully you got something useful out of this because it's it's really fun. You should, you should try it. Uh, download this file if you want to. Links in the description, like I keep saying. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.